Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, we're going to be looking, actually, I'm going to look at a couple of things here this evening, uh, starting off with the blind leading the blind. And um, it's not a very long message, but I think it's going to be an insightful message for you. And uh, I found this particular uh, little image online, and I thought it was kind of interesting that they created that. Uh, you know, kind of like a like a sign you'd see on the side of the road, but this one here, the blind leading the blind, and they both fall in the dead chair. So that was kind of uh, kind of comical, but uh, but at the same time, I ran across this 1914 image called the blind leading the blind, and quite frankly, I have to tell you, they're probably far more accurate in their depiction of what the passage really means than most people would think. Uh, because after all, what you may not know is that Satan himself, the devil, according to some of these uh, uh, documents out of Egypt, they actually consider him to be Semael or Shakael, I believe is the other way they pronounce it, which means the blinded God or the blind God. And so when we look at these passages and these scriptures here, that's why I find this all interesting. And, uh, and, and there's, another, there's another angle I'll look at that as well. Uh, we're going to take a, in just a moment there and, and peek at as well there. But let's first just go to the, the, the gist of the scripture. And that's over here, Matthew 15, verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. But what's also important is every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Now that's speaking more along the line of a genetic kinship, you might say, to those who are descendants of the devil himself. Yeah, believe it or not, that's how deep that could be taken. So... When we look at this, it's not just a surface uh, uh, reading. And we're going to come back to Matthew here in just a moment. In the Hebrew version of this very same uh, verse, we have leave them alone because the blind are leading the blind. And if a blind man leads another who is blind, both will fall into a pit. Now that's singular, the second half of the verse, which would then go back to the imagery we see here. Satan being Samael, the blind God, leading them, and they fall into the pit. But then there's another interesting uh, aspect of all of this too. And that is that, in, in that regards there, we're dealing with spiritual blindedness. Them unable to see who he is. And that in itself is so important. I actually, something's coming on my heart right now, even as I'm talking about this. And, and there's something I've got to find for you. I'm going to have to pause the video just for a moment because there's something that goes with this that I've got to share with you. And there was definitely a reason why I needed to stop. Uh, when I was doing the research for this video, I just scarcely remembered seeing this particular verse in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And then suddenly I'm working on this video and this came back to my mind. I knew you needed to know about this. In, in Revelation chapter 3, again, we're going to get into the blind side of these things, but this is, uh, we'll start with verse 15. I know thy works, that you are neither cold nor hot. Now, would you work cold or hot? So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, this is the church of Laodicea. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not. You are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. 
I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. You see, the thing is, is the blindness itself also is a form when a person is blind to what the truth is, they're without knowledge, without understanding. And when you're without understanding, you don't even realize you're in a prison. That's what Adam and Eve realized at the Garden of Eden. He realized he was naked when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Their eyes, what? Came open. But now here in the last day that we live in, according to what Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 18, speaking of the Laodicean church, they're, going, they're back to the same place Adam was in the Garden of Eden before he realized he was naked. Now they're blind and they're naked and they don't even know they're blind or naked. Adam, though, when his eyes came open, he realized he was naked. What part of the naked was it really speaking of? In other words, he realized he was in a body of flesh. He was in this right here. And the scripture says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So think. I mean, this, is, this gets... I'm just sharing some thoughts with you in different directions to think about a little bit here, okay? So... So anyway, we go back over here and we find out, you know, we see, like I said, we find out that uh, the blind lead the blind. And of course, like I said, that imagery of Satan leading them is so true. But then we get one of these odd scriptures here. And of course, it applies to the priest. You know, God says to Aaron, whosoever he be of the sea throughout their generations that has a blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. But whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. If he's a blind man or a lame, or if he hath anything maimed or anything too long, or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or crooked back dwarf, etc., you we see all these things here. He wasn't allowed to come to make an offering before the Lord. But yet when Jesus came on the scene. He being God manifested in the flesh, we get a totally different picture. Jesus departed thence, and two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. When he was coming to the house, a blind man came to him, and Jesus said to them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yes, Lord. He touched... Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. It didn't matter who it was. Lame, blind, halt, withered, they all came to him. Now granted, I realize Leviticus is talking about the priest. If they had this condition, they weren't to approach God. Do you think Jesus cared? Jesus broke the Sabbath. He broke every commandment practically you can think of when it comes to these type things. Anything that was to do good, Jesus was breaking the commandment, right? At least the law. Think about it, right? Blind man that comes to him. And, and, uh, and I always found this one interesting. It says, Jesus passed by. This is in John chapter uh, 9. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Is that not a provocative statement there? Who sinned? Him or his parents that he's born blind? 
they were persuaded that he had to have done something before he was born to be in this condition or his parents won. Now, Jesus never argued that issue. But the mere fact that they even asked the question is provocative. He says, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. He made clay out of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. That's also another beautiful aspect, too. Spits on the ground, makes clay, kind of like God making Adam from the dust of the earth, right? Did God spit on the ground as well, make the clay form the man, and then breathe in him the breath of life? Maybe so. I don't know. But that is provocative. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. All right, this is the impotent, this is the guy that's kind of crippled up. Down by the uh um Oh, goodness, which pool is that? The sheep, uh, the market, the sheep market, uh, there was a pool there called Bethsaida. There we go. Had five porches. Guy was sitting there lame and withered. And again, the whole point of this is the priest couldn't approach God to give an offering. But Jesus, it didn't matter what your condition was, you could approach You know, going back, though, to this whole thing about the blind leading the blind, though, I also couldn't help but think of this scripture right here in John chapter 8. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither I came of, my, of my, I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of. Uh, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art Samaritan and has a devil. <laughs> Jesus said, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Know we now we know that you have a devil. Abraham is dead, the prophets, and you say, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest yourself thou thou thyself? Jesus answered, I honor myself. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. You have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. And your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Mm. That's when they get into this part about you're not over 50 years old. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. Now, the reason that's important right here, the I am, Ihaye, is what, when God spoke to Moses, Moses asked the question, they will say unto me, you know, or, or how was it there? He goes like that. He says, um, um, yeah, he, say, he said to God, he said, they'll say unto me, who, uh, what is his name? Speaking about God, he said, who, what do I say to them? And God said to Moses, tell them, Ihaye Asha Ihaye. You tell them, I am that I am has sent me unto you. Right? And so here he goes here, before Abraham was, I am. 
And they took them up stones to cast him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So he claimed to be the very God. And the reason why I say this is important here is because the priest could not approach if he was blind or lame or had any kind of imperfection. He couldn't approach God. But here the I am is standing there in front of the people and the lame and the blind and everything else can approach. What a difference. What a difference. One other thing I want to show to you before closing. Like I said, I'm just kind of jumping around today. I saw this, I see this tag quite frequently here in the state of Tennessee with the rattlesnake on the tag and it says, don't tread on me. Now that is of a great interest to me. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because when you're looking at, at, at something like this, knowing, knowing scripturally that it's a message, I wonder how many people really see it. Don't tread on me is a mockery to the scripture itself. In fact, it tells you who runs the state. And yet this is supposed to be a Bible Belt state. And I know there's a lot of good Christians that live here. I know that. No question to it at all. But do Tennesseans that are real true Bible-believing Christians, do you realize what that very tag represents? Let me show you what it represents. Luke. This is the scripture that they're mocking. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the, ser that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. All right. Now the thing is, by that tag where they show the serpent, Jesus said, I've given you power to tread on the head of serpents. And Tennessee comes out with a tag with a rattlesnake on it and says, don't tread on me. You know that song they came out with years ago, The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Well, he must have lived in Tennessee then, I guess. Because Tennessee gladly put the serpent on their tag and says, don't tread on me. Doesn't matter where the devil is, you've got a right to tread because Jesus gave you that right. But don't rejoice over that. Just be rejoiceful that your name is written in heaven. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. God bless you. Thank you for listening and have a blessed day.